Okay, we've got something interesting to go over here today. What I want to discuss is going to be dealing with the digamma function for integer values. We're looking at just positive integers over here on this. We've got our digamma function and we're going to express this in terms of the harmonic numbers and the euler mascheroni constant. So I think all we need for this is a few formulas and definitions over here to the right. First, for the harmonic numbers, if you're not familiar with this, it's pretty straightforward. We've got the definition for the harmonic numbers for an integer n is just going to be this sum here of like for 1 over k from 1 to n. So what you end up with is just part of the harmonic series going just to n. So like if n is 3, let's say you're going to have 1 over 1, 1 over 2, and the last term is going to be 1 over 3. And then we're also going to use this recursive definition for the digamma function we have over here. I went over this one in a previous video. This is a lot like, you know, our recursion for just the gamma function is pretty similar. If we were looking at digamma, sorry, if we're looking at gamma of z plus 1, our formula for this is just z times gamma of z. Because for the integers, this is exactly our definition for like the factorial. That for the factorial, if we had z factorial, this is going to be the same thing. Because if we had z factorial, this is going to be the same thing as like z times z minus 1 factorial. And so this does a similar kind of thing, reducing it by 1, but we've got this plus 1 over n on the end here. And the last thing I want to point out is this thing right here. This is just going to be our euler mascheroni constant, which is going to be approximately 0 0.577 with a bunch of decimals on it. So to get started with it, we're going to use this definition right here and just kind of expand it. It's going to be pretty straightforward, nothing too fancy here. So we'll just use this. And so for an example of this, like if you wanted to find the value for the digamma function of 5, all it does is reduce it. So it's going to say this is going to be the same thing as digamma of 4 plus 1 over 4. But the trouble with this is it's not very satisfying because then it's like, well, what's the digamma of 4? Well, coming back to this, we can just kind of use it again for digamma of n using the same, using the same formula, reduce this by 1. This is going to be the same thing as digamma of n minus 1 plus 1 over n minus 1. But then what's digamma of n minus 1? Well, we do the same thing again, but we have to do it with better handwriting. So then for digamma of n minus 1, subtract 1 again, this is going to be digamma n minus 2 plus 1 over n minus 2. But then this is just going to keep, we're just going to keep going on and on like this forever. We don't know how long we're going because we don't know exactly what n is. But eventually what's going to happen is you're going to hit kind of the wall because eventually you're going to get to digamma of 1, and then using the formula, this is going to be 1 over 1, or just 1 here. But for this, we've got a known value. I did this in another video in a little bit more detail, well, a lot more detail. But this is just going to be minus the Euler-Mascheroni constant. So for our value, eventually, we're going to get to something like 1 minus the constant. So what's going to happen if you put all these together? If we have here, we plug in, this is our value for digamma of n. So if we take that and plug this in here, but then we need to do the same thing and plug all this in for here. What's going to happen is, so when you put all these together, you're going to, all this stuff's going to go away. You're just going to be left with this last value of digamma 1. So what we can do is put this down as, we'll put down our minus Euler mascheroni constant plus 1. But actually, let's go up one level, right? Because above this, what's going to be here is going to be, this is going to be digamma of 2 plus 1 over 2. So for this term, this is going to be 1 over 2. Above this is going to be 1 over 3. Eventually, we're going to get to this one, which is going to be 1 over n minus 2, 1 over n minus 1, and eventually all the way to 1 over n. But then looking, what is all this stuff right here? You can kind of look at this as 1 over 1. This is exactly the same as our harmonic number. So we're doing the exact same thing, building up where our last term is 1 over n. So this stuff's all h to the n, and putting it together, we've got that formula that this is just going to be h sub n minus the constant, and that's it. And so let's just look at a really quick example, just doing this to get a numeric value for this. So what we'll do is, if I want to find digamma, I think let's do 4. So if we do digamma of 4, then our n value for this is going to be just equal to 3. So what we're going to want for this is this is going to be h sub 3 minus the constant, but for h sub 3, that's going to be 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 minus Euler mascheroni constant. Let's get a common denominator really quick. So it's going to be 6 over 6 plus 3 over 6 plus 2 over 6 minus the constant. Putting this together, 
we end up with our solution to this 11 over 6 minus the constant. Okay, there you have it. More fun with the dot gamma function. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.